Hey everybody, this is Vince Miller. Thank you so much for joining me for some more time today in God's Word. Our shout out today goes to Robert Fiscalani from Willis, Texas. Robert, thank you for your support and partnership in the gospel. Today, this is for you. Galatians chapter one. I'm gonna read verses three through five. You get some good verses today, by the way, Robert. It reads, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from this present evil age according to the will of our God and Father to whom be the glory forever and ever, amen. So church, this introductory clause here is so important for a couple of reasons. First, it's with the word grace, grace, that Paul is going to begin the letter and the same word he's going to use to close off this letter in Galatians 6, verse 18. Go ahead and read it. Second, grace is actually the whole reason that he's writing the letter in the first place. <laughs> uh, so here's how we define grace. Grace is this. It is God's loving kindness and favor that we don't earn or deserve. It's something freely given to us because of what Jesus did on that cross. Through Jesus, God offers us things like forgiveness and salvation and a restored relationship with God, even though, even though we fall short and make many mistakes and sins. It's a gift from God, demonstrating his unending love for us and his desire to be close to us. And once we start digging into this letter, you're going to see why Paul here intentionally uses the term grace. It's specifically because they had drifted from God's grace, primarily because they were listening to some teachers who weren't teaching a doctrine of grace, but a doctrine of works. So today I want to break down both ideologies for you, the doctrine of grace and the doctrine of works, so you can see how they relate to our salvation and the core message of this book. First, let's talk about the doctrine of grace. So the doctrine of grace teaches that salvation, or rather being made right with God, is a gift freely extended by God. It's not something that we earn through our good works or deeds or efforts. Instead, it's an entirely based on God's love and his mercy toward us. This great is, grace is made possible through Jesus Christ, who lived a perfect life and then died on the cross for our sins and then rose again, conquering death and sin. When we believe in Jesus and accept him as our Savior, we receive the gift of grace, which includes forgiveness of sins and reconciliation with God and the promise of eternal life. Second, you have the doctrine of works. So this doctrine emphasizes the idea that our actions and good deeds play a role in earning salvation or favor with God. This perspective suggests that following religious laws or performing rituals or doing good works can somehow merit God's acceptance and approval. However, according to Christian belief, no amount of human effort or good deeds can make us right or righteous in God's eyes. The Bible clearly teaches that all have fallen short of God's standards, Romans 3.23, and that our righteousness is like filthy rags compared to God's holiness. So with this understanding in place, we got to come back to our text. Paul is saying that God's grace by means of Jesus's life, death, and resurrection is our deliverance. His grace is our only deliverance. That's it. So those of you listening today who have been in situations where you knew there was nothing you could do to save yourself. Understand what it means to trust in the grace of another person and God alone. If you have been, for example, caught in adultery by a spouse, knowing it was wrong and desired to reconcile, you understand that your spouse's grace and God's grace in them is all you have. It's all you have. And many of you out there have been in situations just like that, where there was no work you could do Grace was your only hope. It is you that understand what Paul is talking about here when he mentions the word grace. And this is what he's about to remind these Galatian churches about. God's incredible grace. God's good and free grace. And it's not made possible by something you can do. I want to recognize today that maybe some of you out there right now need grace. Maybe you need grace from a person. Maybe even more, you need grace from God. And today, if you need grace, I'm going to pray for you. Hear this prayer. Father, 
The believer on the other side of this devotional needs grace today. They realize that their sinful deeds have gotten them to where they are at this moment in time and that they can do no good deed to make any of it right. They realize that their only hope is in your grace in this ungracious and unforgiving world. So today they need your deliverance. Deliver them right now by the only man who did any good work on our behalf, your sinless and loving son. Redeem their life, remove their sin, restore the relationship with you made possible only through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, in which right now they place all their faith. Amen. Church, if you prayed this prayer today, I want you to let me know, that email below. Just let me know, because this is a great moment in your life, a moment of great grace. I love you guys. I'll see you right back here again tomorrow.